Hello, hello, peoples. So I was thinking next time I got into Houdini, uh, I would just record whatever I'm doing to make something trippy or kind of cool looking video like, like you can see here. Um, and just sort of show the processes of how I make it along the way. Um, so I'm just starting out with an empty scene here. Um, if you drop down a geo node, um, and first step I'm going to be taking is to actually make this uh, OTL that I, I made back in 13 and I just you know never got around to making it 14. So I figured, why not? I'll just make it. Um, so I'm just going to add. I put down an add node, so I can put down a point. Um, if you can't tell, actually you can't really tell, but there's a point in the center there. I'm going to turn off this whatever it is. Uh, if you hit D over the viewport, it'll open up uh, your visualization options and the origin gnome gnome gnomen <laughs> um, Just uh, turn that off, and you can, uh, you can see the point. Oh, and if you don't know, you should you should go through some of these options because there there are definitely some cool little options like now, oh, geez, like being able to turn on how how long the normals look, and you know it's it's pretty useful uh, to look around, you know, to get used to the program. So I'm gonna put down a bop stop, uh, get the node going, and start the tool to be made. So I'm gonna just dive on in here, and if you control V, it'll uh, zoom into whatever panel your mouse is over you're in basically and I'm gonna put down some anti-alias flow noise I like flow noise because it can add some flow a little bit of flow but, but the flow acts a little bit funky so uh, what I'm gonna do start out I'm just gonna get the P into position and position is zero 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 so I'm gonna use time to offset uh, the actual point in space. Now, I like doing this just because it gives me a little bit more um, uh, customability, custom customization ability of where it's going in space. Now, now flow is nice and all, but I like messing around with offset instead. And then that way we can also add like a parameter, and then that way we can modify the offset even more. So I'm going to do make a parameter that I can um, edit above. On the node itself, and I'm going to call this uh, offset time mode, and put it directly into the multiply. Now, if you don't know what this is doing, if you hit U, it will go back up, and it just puts a parameter down for you. So um, that way, we can modify it later. Uh, on top of this, a PT because the point is at a uh, PT uh, position because the point is at zero zero zero. I'm going to add. Um, in the point number itself. So that way, if we have a whole bunch of points that are at zero or a whole bunch of points that are, you know, it just gives a better offset. So I'm going to do uh, the point number itself and convert it over to a vector and go to that piece, connect it all up, and I'm going to add it in to the position itself. All right, now we got the beginnings of the makings of a noise pattern. So uh, when you drop it down, it always goes to 1D. Switch it over to 3D. And now you can use it as a position. Yeah. Let's just see what it looks like, just to see what it looks like. Oh, it's not doing anything. Probably because the time mult is set to zero. Whee! Uh, crazy noisy. And um, what makes it a little difficult is that we have no ability to drive these unless we dive on in. So if you actually middle mouse on the input themselves, you have the ability to promote the attribute. Uh, I'll do that after. So that you can actually get at the parameters at on the node itself. So now we have control over all these values. So if I, you know, if I set this to like, let's say 10, or zero, that works too. And let's say lower the velocities, um, um, frequency some. Wow, that's really noisy. Because noise. There's noise, roughness. Um, so now it's a little smoother, and you can't really see what's going on. So I'm going to put down a point node, connect that into the point node. I'm going to put down a copy node. Getting ahead of myself here. Yeah. And what what a copy node is is it will take whatever the first input is and copy it onto every single point of the second. Whoa, that's see that's a big ball, and paste it onto every single point that you put into it. So now we can actually see this thing swinging around in space. And I kind of like it. A little, little swirly, swirly. Now it's, um, you know, it's a pretty frequent. I'm going to drop down the octaves a little bit. 
and that way you get a nice little swinging kind of values going. Back it. It's the beginning of something. It's the beginning of our tour that we're making. Um, and so, you know, just to get it going, I'm going to turn this into an asset so I can, I can call this up later. If you drop down the, uh, the um, sub, submit, yeah, submit, um, you'll be able to right click on it and hit create digital asset. And this will make it so you can just drop it down wherever you want. So this is a deformer. Uh, I'm going to say noise deformer. Noise, def noise, and H, HDA, whatever. I'm used to OTLs. I'm, I'm from a different time and pace. Um, but okay, so now this window that popped up is basically the parameters that are on the node itself. And since there are nothing here, I'm going to dive on in on this node itself. Just right click, and you can do export parameter to type windows, uh, to type properties, sorry, and this will just input them in, in there for you. And you notice uh, whatever the current value is, is the default value on your, on your channels tab. I'm just going to set this back. But you can set whatever the, the default values are in there. Um, but what you could also do is just click and drag if you don't want to right click on every single one of them and we'll make it for you. Now if you already know about this stuff, you know, I, you know I'm just sort of doing this just to make it a little easier for other people. Uh, since flow is like time, I'm going to do flow on top, actually frequency I want on top. So you can just click and drag them, reorganize. Select, keep organized. Organization is nice. Okay. So, ah, managed to actually uh, get them all. You'll notice they turn green. Um, I didn't miss any. <laughs> um, and so now we have our, our options on here. I'm just going to hit uh, save operator type. So I'm going to I'm going to make this into kind of like a trail. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's see how it looks with a line because we're going to be using multiple points for this. So I'm going to make a line with a whole bunch of points. Throw them on in there. Just to see what things happen. Ooh, cool. Um, shrink this down a little, maybe. So basically, what we get is a line that's flying around in space, which is quite erratic. And I'm assuming that's because if we dive directly in again, it's because of the PT. The PT is retaining. It's just stepping by one by one by one by one. So you know what? I'm going to multiply the PT itself, and so we can use it kind of like as a different type of offset. I'm going to put down a multiply and do a parameter. So the parameter, this way, we can multiply every channel X, Y, Z um, separately of each other. Point on moles. So I'm going to set this over to a vector and multiply it back in. So now, now everything is multiplying by zero. Now what that means is we're getting the offset of the line itself, as you can see right here, into the offset in space. So it'll be kind of more like a trail, and since our time molt is a little bit high, then the time molt, our time molt, now you notice it's stopped in space. Now we do too. We do it. No, ah, gonna have to do it. So our time molt, get it kind of off in space. So it kind of gets this sweeping kind of action. I like it though. It looks pretty. Okay. So that's just coming from uh, Oxif. And since I didn't propagate that up to the top, I need to dive in here. So that we can get an offset. Now, basically, it'll start trailing through space as it would be moving in space, since you're already offsetting it as though it's just the point number, now it's basically trailing after itself. So, you know, you get some neat effects here. Uh, can I, no, I should just leave the window open underneath it. I? Get properties. And I'm just going to, I'll hit with it with it. Put down, put that into frequency right up here. Put down more. Sounds good. Okay. So now we have a noise node. A accurate noise node. Scale it up. Super lot, use the PT, drive its movement in space. Whee! Okay, so I want to put up noise of the, the speed a little bit, because that's our time. It's a really cool kind of sweeping action. I like this. I like where this is going. Kind of follows. Whee! <laughs> so, what I always like to do is um, generate a, a particle sim over top of this. 
it's just something I do, and and that'll be at the beginning of what you saw earlier. So I'm just going to put down a trail node. Um, trail node is good for a lot of different things. Uh, I use this all over the place. So right now, as you can see, uh, preserve original. Um, if you turn on your trails and oh, I'm at frame one. Um, you need to get a couple of frames in before you can actually see what the trail trail stop is doing. So you can kind of see that it's doing this kind of. Uh, Echoing effect. You can change in integrals. It's basically how, like, how many frames back it's pulling from, how many, uh, how many trail lengths that you're doing. Now that you could do this per particle. You can do this as you can see here with a line. And so what you could do with this is just put down a lock, and you get uh, kind of a ribbon in space. Nice little uh, ribbon. <laughs> Sweet. Kind of looks like. Um, Kind of looks like uh, one of those screensavers from uh, Mac back in the days, bouncing around. <laughs> okay, anyway, um, that, that's not why I put down the trail stop. The reason I put down the trail stop is actually to get velocity. Uh, so this is actually going to com com uh, compute velocity between frames for each point. Now, if you go to your uh, geometry spreadsheet, you notice the, the velocity is changing per frames. But with the default values, it's set to um, calculate velocity backwards in time. Now that's nice and all, but once you go back to frame one, you'll notice that there's no velocity. Now you could set this to forward difference, so it'll actually calculate forward in time, but if you go to the last frame, you have nothing. So what I like to do is central difference, so it kind of blends uh, three frames together. Now if you go to the first frame, you'll actually have a value, last frame you actually have a value. Now there's a little bit of smoothing involved, but you know, at least you get, um, you get the velocity that you're hoping for. So it's just calculating between uh, three frames. I'm going to do two frames so that way it'll just calculate where it's moving in between one and one and one frame forward and back so why am I doing this I'm going to use that to actually drive uh, the particle stream itself so I'm going to drop down a dot network and get this to actually spew points out of it now hmm, what's the name because I know I'm going to be calling this up uh, later let's just do a dot input Input. Yeah. Input. So um, I know I'm going to be calling that up later. So I just figure I was I was just to name things to be a little bit easier. And oop, let's zoom in again. Uh, let's do a pop source. So that'll take the the line that we put into it and actually uh, drive where it's going. But let me just build out the network object. Let me just build out this network first, so you can actually uh, start to see something. So. We Makes it a little easier to explain. Um, and then a pop, pop, pop solver. Okay, so your object is what the points get, uh, the particles get generated into. Uh, your pop source is what's going to be um, basically generating the points for you into that pop object. Um, and that way, you'll start to see right off the bat. Uh, I'm assuming because I didn't set my input, first context input geometry, you can already tell that there are points there, um, that you'll start to see uh, spiraling through space, like a wave of particles being generated out. <laughs> this is kind of cool, actually. Now, um, that velocity is what's driving where the particles are flying. So that velocity we just generated is what's causing them to fly into space. Otherwise, they would just sort of generate outward randomly as they are. Um, and what's fun is that where it's coming from on the pop source itself, under the attributes window, it says inherit velocity. So I'm going to do uh, add velocity, uh, add to inherit. Um, and then this way, I like always, it gives me like a little bit of an offset. No, heck, I'll leave it at one. And then that way, you get more of a, a spray effect. Yeah, that's neat. I'm going to drop this down a little bit, maybe. Spray! Okay, so I'm going to use this and start to modify uh, what's going on. Now, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Okay, so I'm going to, after this, generate out uh, an original attribute. So I'm going to say, how about uh, point, uh, attribute create. And you know what? This isn't going to work anymore. So I'm going to say trail. And I'm going to make a null. I know there's other ways that you can do this. I'm just doing this because it's easy, so I can find it later. Um, and, uh, I know I could scan all the way up to the top to find what the input of the dot node is and everything else, but that's for another time and place. So what I create this attribute node, I'm going to say 
Courage PT. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is that if you notice with the velocity, it picked up the velocity by default. So now, if you put down original PT as, uh, as a number sign PT to get the original point, it will generate out the PT. Wow, that's what? How about we do integer and it gets the integer itself and orig pt it's telling you what the original point that it's coming from is now so that will maintain itself throughout the entire sim i know there's a lot of points being generated but it will maintain itself throughout the entire sim that way we can make it like an, an attractive force what i'm going to do is do a uh, uh sop i always do that okay sop solver okay um, now what this is going to do is it's basically like a SOP network inside of DOPS. So if you dive in here, you have your different type of inputs, and this right here is the the point, the points that are coming in here. And you can act like it's just a regular SOP, um, uh, SOP network that you're working in. So I'm going to do object merge, and I'm just going to pull out that uh, here we go, DOP input. So now I'm actually pulling in that curve that I generated. So uh, even though we're in the we're still in the dot network, it will calculate out as though it's simulating uh, to show you what that is, um, just because of the view flag. So what I want to do is actually get it to fly at the original point. And that way we can get some weird movement in space from that curve initially, and then just get it kind of like trailing back to the line. Not my motorcycle. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to bring in the um, original point attribute, input point attribute? Yes, okay. So that, that second input was our line, so I'm going to bring that in. The PT is going to be the PT attribute that we made. I guess I don't want to mess that up. Because <laughs> if I was to use PT, it would be trying to pull from points that don't exist. Not fun. Um, PT or edge. So if we put down a bind node, you can get that PT or ridge, and it's basically trying to pull in um, whatever that value is, whatever our, uh, I don't have over here, whatever the, the original PT was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract, oh, that's a subnet, don't want that, subtract. So I'm going to subtract the position it wants to go to from the current position. Now this will basically build out a, um, a, uh, kind of a line, so it'll want to go to that original point in space, like, demanding, it, it, it has the dedication to get to that original, that's whatever, it's an effector force, it's just, it's just trying to pull back. So, you know, if you notice, it's just pulling back to the original point, no matter where it is, it'll try to go back to that original point that it was going to. Kind of spicy, kind of like it, kind of like it, it's kind of get like a little a wave of movement, that's kind of cool though. Or is it actually going away from the point? Did I do this wrong? Let's see what it looks like if I flip them. Just to see what it looks like if I flip it. Flip it. Ooh, now it's flying away. So I had to write the first place, um, subtracting the point that you want to go to from the current position to get the, the vector that you need to actually go to that position. Um, but anyway, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, and so we just, we just basically set up an attractor force to that original curve. Now, that's fun and all. It's generating out a lot of points. Uh, I'm just going to generate out points within uh, a certain time frame. Uh, let's say, scatter onto service. You know what? I'm going to do all points. And that way, it'll get more of a, more of a line. Because I, I, I want to know how many points are basically getting generated out throughout the, the time frame, rather than on a surface. It, on the surface will be a lot smoother, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of particular in how things go. Now, this uh, impulse activation is basically either a zero or a one. If it's set to one, it'll constantly be making points. If it's set to uh, one, uh, sorry, it'll be constantly making points. And so what I just did is I said if the frame is under three, which, you know, one, two, three, or whatever, um, it'll stay at a one. So if I generate out, it, uh, now that I'm past three, or actually past two technically, it is a zero. So now it's just forever out, just going to try to trail after that curve to the original point that it's going to. It's going to point zero. 
And why is it going to point zero? That's because a ridge point. Oh, <laughs> I typed in PT or ridge, didn't I? So I messed up there. A ridge PT. So now it will be going. It will be going to the original point that it generated from. That's more like what I was hoping for. Now it's staying on the line pretty pretty harshly. It's a very strong force to go back to the velocity of it. So what I want to do in here, now the same thing we were doing before, um, I'm just going to add a multiplier in here. And actually, what I should be doing, also with a multiplier, but I'm going to add in the current velocity with the velocities calculator. This one won't be absolute. You'll actually be able to see uh, the previous frame's velocity getting uh, into the mix here. So this might get a little bit harsh just because it might get over one and things will fly around, but get a very, wow, it's kind of cool. Kind of like snake it around in space. Because what it's going to be doing is flying past the point and then back to the point, past the point. And so that's, that's kind of not fun. So with that in mind, I'm going to add in some, uh, some multipliers here. So I could add, let's say, a multiplier on the original PT, uh, the original velocity, sorry. I'm just going to do a parameter. I'm going to leave it afloat just because uh, a ridge, a bell, and I'm going to multiply that. And then I'm going, I'm going to do the same thing with the calculated force. So mult. Oh, OK. And parameter and uh, whole bell. Mult. Mult. Everything is a mult. OK. Ah, see, messed up on that too, because it's the Ridgeville moat. So, I don't know, what if I'm going to be adding forces later? You just want to make sure you can actually understand what the, the names are for things. I'm going to hit save, make sure I save. Um, and then this way, we have complete control over, let's say, the original velocity. I'm going to leave it a little lower, and then the pull velocity, which I'm going to make a little higher. Um, and so it'll be a lot smoother. It's not flying past the point, it's just trying to get to the point. And actually, so we can actually see what is trying to happen. Let's do a merge, measure, merge. And I'm going to merge in the line that we have generated along with our sim. So that way we can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. So you can see it wants to go over there. So we can't quite make it there in time. It's just going to be flying around in space. Get a little closer. Oh no, I want to get closer. There. Right, so th this is the type of stuff I end up, I end up doing just for fun. Um, but okay, uh, so I don't like that it's staying on the line. That's not cool. It doesn't look cool. So I'm going to do I'm going to do a radiant force to push it away from every point nearby. So what I'm going to do is do another one of those uh, sop solvers. I know I can do it in this one itself, but I just like keeping things separate because I could say like two line. Now I'm going to say uh, radiant. Push. Okay, so now the radiant push. What am I going to do here? Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, there's something called a point relax. Now, oh, man, I'm so happy they added this to 13. Dude, oh, jeez, this thing is so freaking cool. Okay, basically, what it's doing is based on the distance from, uh, let's say, your radius in, in space. It will push things away from each other. It's so freaking cool. So you don't need to worry about um, points being over top of each other, and it's based on the radius itself. And so you just you you push up the radius, and the thing just keeps away from each other. I'm so happy they did this. So happy. Okay. Good. Anyway, basically, I made this for um, I, I made this one for 13, and it just took so long. So many different um, nodes involved, or, or VOP uh, VOP code, and it was slow. And you know maybe I should have made it in Python, but I didn't really know Python at the time, or not as well as I do now. And basically now it's a compiled node, super fun. Basically, if you're on, you're on a plane, pushing in, in um, turning off that checkbox for 3D space, it'll keep on a plane and keep it nice and nice and easy. But um, we're working in a 3D space, so I'm going to do that. I'm trying to figure out why I didn't want to uh, update that. Oh, because you know why? I'm not on the frame right there. So you can see that it's pushed out in space. Um, let's do that again. So you can push it out into 3D space. 
if I do relax, uh, turn that off, and it's it's just not on a 3D space, it doesn't know what it's doing. Uh, it's not on a 2D plane, it doesn't know what it's doing. So if you do like a surface to adhere to, that would be when you leave this off. So we're in 3D space, I don't really care. Uh, this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna put down a point scale of 0.2, just because I want them to push away from each other at, at that kind of scale. Um, and from here, we're gonna do a similar thing that we did with the other node. Uh, I'm gonna do a point import attribute. And we're gonna say our second input from the file. Our PT num is the PT num, because we're just working with the, the same point right now. And I'm going to subtract the point position. Oh, I did submit again. Come on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to subtract uh, the current, the position it should be going to from the current position to get a velocity to push away. Now, what I just did is overwrote the velocity, so I'm going to add in the current velocity again. So it'll be an additive, uh, an additive push force, additive push, uh, versus a uh, absolute value to stay in space. And I'm not a big fan of that, but you know, hey, now now we have an additive kind of pushing. So what is this going to do? As as the sim runs, they'll try to push away from each other along with go to the original point that it should want to go to. Now, I want to be able to modify some of these values because I want to push it back up a little bit more um, to, to go to the line a little bit quicker. So what we can do, since there are no no attributes, you can actually do what we did before with that, with that, uh, that push value to uh, um, the type property window, um, you, we could do the same thing that we did before when we were trying to make our uh, our little tool that we were making. You could just open it up from the little gear, go to edit interface properties or parameter interface, I can't speak either, and then just drop them in there. So then when you go up to the top, we have control over the velocity and everything else. This way, it makes it a little bit easier to actually have control over um, over what's inside the node rather than um, editing it every single time or diving in there every single time. So I'm going to do the same thing for uh, for this too with a relaxed force. I'm going to do iterations and I'm going to do PT scale. Because um, you never know, maybe I want to make the scale a little bit larger. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hit save just to make sure. Uh, original velocity, I'm going to raise that up a bit more, and then I'm going to raise up the velocity to go to the line a little bit more. So now we have a bit more of a force that's tracking after that curve. I like that. It looks kind of cool. It looks really cool, actually. <laughs> Sweet. I like that a lot. Okay, so with that in mind, with that in mind, ah, just disconnected it. So, okay. How big is this? Yeah, it's big enough. Okay. I'm going to make that, uh, those little lines, I'm going to make this turn into a trail of, like, lines in space, kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a four each node. So I'm going to run over every single, uh, every single point that you can see here to turn it into a whole bunch of lines. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you could actually do this. Um, turn it, use a partition node, make your own groups. Uh, what I like to do is actually run over every single node, it's, uh, every single point itself. And so I do each number. So I'm going to do op input path. Uh, now, this is just a nifty little trick, so you don't need to do input path. Okay, nifty little trick, so you don't need to keep typing in names of, of um, inputs and everything else. So it's basically finding whatever the input is and then find, uh, giving you the name for it. But I'm also going to do n points. So that's the number of n points. It's the number of points of the input uh, node that's actually right there. So as you can tell, it went back from being broken to fixed. And if you just click on the attribute, uh, the parameter, it'll give you. There's 46 uh, points. And if I have middle mouse, there's 46 points. So perfect. Uh, now we have a, a for each little system that can run over every single point in here. So now in here, uh, if I drop down a delete node. Um, now I'm just doing this. Uh, there's probably better ways to do this. I I'm unaware. Um, this is just how I've learned. Is that I'm going to delete out every point but the point that I'm currently working on. So if I do if. Uh, 
Uh, you know, I don't even need that. I'm just going to do pt equals uh, pt equals. Well, uh, oh, ah, software update. Dang your software update. pt equals stamp of the node above, and this is this is just a little tricky, but it's the four uh, idx value, whatever. Blue. Um, IDX value. And what this is going to do is it's going to find the current iteration that you're on by the number ID. So it's going to count up, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all that type of thing. And if it's equal to the PT, right now it's going to set to delete it. But I want to set it to not delete it. Um, and so you can see if, if you view the viewport, that should be point 0 in your iterations. Now, why am I doing this? Remember that trail node I just told you about? Oop, that's the point node. I'm going to do trail. Now the trail node, like I showed you in the beginning, I'm going to use this to make a basically a line. So I'm going to do whoo, a whole bunch of lines, change the uh, iteration a little bit. But because we're at frame 24, it probably won't go too far, as you can see here. So I'm just going to make this like three trail iteration of eight. That's fine. Um, actually, you know what? That might get a little slow. I'm going to do five, just so the trail isn't that bad. Uh, so now it's basically making a line from every individual point. Now things might get a little slow if I uh, try to do calculations. Oh, it didn't work because the PT for some reason doesn't like it. Didn't like it. I thought it would work. I thought it would, yeah, it should be fine. Okay, maybe it's the ID X one. Oh, if I spelt it right. So, okay, <laughs> value. <laughs> there we go, how about that? Um, so now, what we'll be noticing is that every single point is getting a trail behind it. Now that's a, a bit messy, but you can kind of see on the fringes that there are a couple that get that line. Um, and so, why don't I just get this visualized a little bit better? Now, I'd like to exploit the point node a bit. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is that you can basically draw the line based on where these points are simply by adopting the, the second inputs x, y, x, z, um, you know, the, the second inputs t, z values. Um, now the line needs to be the same uh, point numbers, so I'm going to do point uh, in points, can't type either, uh, of the trail one. So now we get five points per line, and as you can tell here, they're trailing. So wherever it goes in space, the, the lines are going to be trailing after each other. Trails. Okay, so you know what? I like what it's doing, but I'm going to go into here into a little stop network. Uh, that's fine. But I'm going to give us a little bit more room to play around with. Okay, so did you notice that weird little line going to the center point? That is a little a little annoyance that happens with uh, the line node. So that that for each that we just made, if there isn't another if there aren't two lines or two points to adopt for the, the point node, you notice that it errors out or it gives you a warning at least. And just super sonic over here. Yeah, fan gets a little bit loud. Should probably clean up the computer a little bit better. But basically, if there's only one point, we don't want the points to keep going through. We, we don't want the points to get that line going to the center. So I'm going to add down a switch. So if, if there's only one point in the trail, I don't want it running through this section. So actually, I don't want anything at all if it's running, if there's only one point. Because so that means it's the starting frame, not very fun. So what I'm going to do is less than two. So basically, if we start playing this out, you'll notice that the lines start to build out from the original point in space that they're generated from. So now we get this nice little trailing kind of line thing. I like it. I like where this is going. Uh, of course, I'm going to um, probably want to uh, sim out this simulation a little bit quicker than running through the 4 each. Because if you're running through the 4 each every single frame, it's going to be showing you that those lines that are being calculated out. Well, I kind of like what it's doing, though. Spirally, spirally, spirally. So it's going really quick. Uh, this, this button here makes it run through 24 frames a second, so you don't get the, the weird little quickness going. So this is kind of neat. I like, I like what it's doing. I like what it's doing. Now, let's see, there's usually an issue. Uh, the relaxed node 
because it's relaxing, it might push the points a little far between certain frames. You might even actually see like little pops and jolts. Um, and generally, I mean, the, cur the curves are kind of smooth already, but you know, it's probably fine for the time being. Um, what I'm going to do is resample these curves, though. That way we get nice, nice and smoother curves. That way we can. Uh, one. I'm gonna, the length is basically the distance between each point. Uh, so if you could say like 0.1 or 0.15 or something, you notice that there's a lot more curves going on. Uh, if you resample based on code, create, maintain last vertex. So this way, um, it'll be the length of the curve no matter what. Um, and it doesn't really matter. It's, um, oh, there we go. There's the, one of those little pops I was talking about, this line right here. That's Jimmy's like that. So with that in mind, I'm going to smooth. And since we have a, um, a, a resampled curve, it's going to make things a little bit nicer. So now that, that smoothing is, is nice, nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. OK. So I'm going to stop being a little weird here and uh, just play through it a little bit. So cool. It's a uh, nice little spiralies of lines flying everywhere. I kind of like how this is going. Um, now, I'm assuming that th this has probably been getting out to be a little bit longer of a video than, than intended. So I'm going to try to cut this a little bit shorter. But um, So basically, this whole video, you, you saw me create a, an OTL. You saw me use that OTL to um, basically get a noise pattern uh, that we could use to create the, the line that would be able to generate points that would be following after those, that line. So this is a, a, an attractive force with points that are trying to avoid each other every single frame of simulation. So you get this really cool kind of spirally tracking effect. Now, um, you know, uh, just to get a little bit more going in here. <laughs> okay, so my computer just recovered from a catastrophic failure. Um, but I'm just going to jump back into here. Uh, I'm going to show you real quick if you use render region. You can just click anywhere in your viewport and uh, draw a box. And Houdini will render out whatever you have in your scene. And so what the, the, the fun thing about it is that any lines, any points that you have will render out in Houdini. It's just like how the built-in functionality is. So you get to see these lines as they are. Really kind of cool. Um, but I'm going to show you real quick that you can color these lines individually uh, and render that as well just by doing um, a point value, uh, point ID. Um, point ID, what am I talking about? Just uh, um, a, a CD. Um, uh, attribute on the points themselves. So I'm going to put down a VOP node and I'm going to do a quick uh, a quick kind of noise pattern like we did on the OTL, but I'm just going to do this real quick. Uh, Anti-noise, anti-low noise, sounds good. And I'm going to use the ID, which is an integer, so we need to convert uh, integer to float. And I'm going to use that, use that and generate a vector out of it. Just because is fun. Oh, go to that. Um, and I'm going to use this to basically offset the position in space. And heck, whatever, I'll offset the offset because it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm going to um, uh, promote all the rest of these attributes just because I'm going to be using them in the future. Just because it doesn't really matter. We don't need to, but I'm doing it anyway because why not? And grab that guy switch to 3D noise, and just take the 3D noise and pump it into your CD. Really simple. Um, and I'm going to go up and pop out here. And so you can see, here, here, pop out. This is the offset, is the issue. So I'm going to promote offset, because noise patterns, uh, they rely on integers almost being for what they are. Uh, if we offset the integer is basically going to be like the stop point in every single wave pattern. So if we offset it by a little bit, you'll be able to get colors that show up here. Um, I know if we did a division of the ID, you'll be able to see them also. Now, the reason I did this is so we can draw lines with them. Now, the lines are going to pick up as white, and this is because uh, on the trail stop, it will maintain that it has CD, but we're putting out a line that doesn't have CD. So we're going to add color, add the second color, and it'll automatically just pick up whatever color it is that are on the points. So if you pop back out, you'll see that there's a color pattern going on here. Now if we do a render region again, 
you can see the old white curves or white lines that were rendered. And if this calculates out and gets rendered out, you'll notice that all of them pick up the color that are on the line themselves. So um, hopefully, uh, maybe throughout this time uh, watching this video, you got to see uh, some things maybe you didn't know how to do, or maybe you did know, but maybe there's a different method of doing it. Um, but uh, I'm going to probably continue messing around just to get like a neat little video out of this. Um, uh, and I, I guess I'll post maybe a different video later on, a little sooner. But um, I, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something out of it. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you be.